What is up guys? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip that initial waffle, please look at the timestamps below and along the timeline. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. And that's only if you enjoy the content, of course. And just to mention, some people haven't been getting notifications from our videos. So that notification bell is really important. If you click it, you can select to always be notified if you choose to, of course. And then you will be notified every single time rather than when YouTube randomly decides to. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the time out of your day today, and I hope you enjoy today's stories. Much love, guys. Our first story comes from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for needing my daughter to help? I, 62, lost my wife 10 years ago. This happened during that time, but has been brought up recently. When my wife died, I ended up relying heavily on my oldest, who was 16, and I'll call Nancy. She gave up the most, I'll admit that, because I needed someone to watch the younger boys while I worked. She can no longer be part of her soccer team or her art program. I needed her home. During her senior year, she told me going to prom was very important to her and to please figure something out so she could go. I said I would, but I ended up forgetting about it and worked late. I got home to find her crying in her dress. I was tired and didn't want to get into it and I told her I was sorry, but it wasn't like she missed anything important. Nancy didn't talk to me for days after that. When her college letters started coming in, I didn't think much of it and assumed she'd pick a college close to home. Well, she ended up getting a partial scholarship to a school several hours away. I was pretty upset because I still needed help, but she said she gave up two years of doing anything for herself to take care of her brothers and she wasn't a replacement mum and I used her. I said she was being dramatic and couldn't abandon her family. What were we supposed to do? She said I should be a parent and figure it out. There was a big fight, but she left anyhow. I don't have much contact with her now. My oldest son is in senior year and he was FaceTiming Nancy, saying there wouldn't be a prom and how he understood, but he was disappointed because he really wanted to take his girlfriend. Nancy said she understood because she didn't get to go to her senior prom either. He said he was sorry, but she said it wasn't his fault, he was just a kid, and that I didn't come home when I was supposed to, so she missed it. I came in and said it was pretty pathetic that she still hung up on that, and she snapped back. It was far more pathetic to be so inept as a parent, I couldn't handle giving her one night that I knew was important to her. She then said goodbye to her brother and signed off. My son said I'm an arsehole, and that it was no surprise Nancy wanted nothing to do with me. I got angry and grounded him, but he just laughed. I don't think it was at all appropriate for her to tell him that, but my son maintains I'm the only arsehole here. So, am I the arsehole? Wow, what an incredibly sad story for this family to lose their mum and wife, and then for the father to be acting that way. And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm wrong in saying it, but, you know, she's right. You're acting inept as a father. She sacrificed major parts of her life just to just to help with family and you treated her this way one night she was asking one night and the prom was important to her i had to stop for a moment because i was in tears thinking of this poor girl him coming home from work and she sat there in a dress by herself crying knowing she's missing something something that she was really looking forward to and it's the one night she asked for and she's totally right. It's your job as a parent to figure these things out and not punish your daughter like, like it seems in this story. And I get the whole family thing. I'm a big person who loves to look after family and take care of family when they're in need. But you know, there is limits. She needs to live her life too. She currently didn't have much of a life apart from looking after the younger brothers, which I'm sure she didn't mind doing as it sounded in that FaceTime. She doesn't blame her. She doesn't resent her younger brothers for it. She blames her father. So immediately on our first story, this is a rare one. I'm going with you're the arsehole. But let's have a look at the comments below to see what they say. Jersey girl on the go says you're the arsehole. Nancy said it perfectly. So I repeat it once more for the cheap seats. <laughs> it's pathetic to be so inept as a parent that you can't handle giving her one night that you knew was important to her. Parentification is abuse. Cup of Cheesecake says you're the arsehole. She was a teenager and it was important to her. Like you said, she had to sacrifice so many things to do something that wasn't her responsibility, but she did it anyways and only asked you for one thing in return. Of course, she's still going to be mad and blame you for it. 
Lucy Van Pelt says, you're the asshole. Your wife's death was felt by you, but you acted like a 16 year old should just suck it up after having lost her mother. It wasn't fair to her and it's not fair that you are making light of your daughter's feelings, even now. Milo and Elva says, yes, you're the asshole. A huge, huge asshole. Your child is not a parent and it was reprehensible of you to force that responsibility onto her and act like she owed it to you. I'm not surprised at all she doesn't speak to you. Clearly your son agrees. I'm sure you're asking, what else should I have done? How about anything but robbing your child of important formative experiences? Sure, you probably had to pay a little more money or been required to make more sacrifices to your own lifestyle, but you are the parent here, not your daughter. And Chloe1218 says, assuming you're not trolling, this is just sick. You're a horrible parent. Holy shit. You're the arsehole. Now, what do you guys think of this story? I was coming into this one just from reading the title and thinking, oh yeah, this is going to be just like a your standard, not the arsehole to get us started. But wow. What a turnaround. Let me know what you guys think of this story in the comments below. And don't forget to vote on the poll for story one. And our next story is from Organic Initiative 8. Am I the arsehole for putting my foot down and saying mother-in-law can't move in with us? My 31 male wife, 33 female, is an only child and extremely close with her parents. We live on opposite sides of the country from her parents, but they talk up to four times per day. And as far as I'm concerned, my wife acts as their remote personal assistant, shopper, accountant, tech support specialist. I've been really upfront with my wife to say I'm a bit jealous of the attention they get, as anything between my wife and I is subject to being derailed if her phone rings. My wife is sympathetic, but says she's not going to pick favorites between me and her parents. When they do visit, particularly at Christmas, they and my wife insist on them staying with us for a week in our one bedroom condo. We've done this the last eight years, which has actually turned into a bit of a miserable time of the year for me as a result. I love my wife, so I deal with it. It's not a secret I'm not a fan of the arrangement, but I'm not interested in ruining Christmas, so I'm a good sport about it. Anyway, my father-in-law is suffering from Alzheimer's, and I have suspected he has been for as long as I've known him, eight years. My mother-in-law has been in complete denial about this up until very recently when they have just started with the process for having him placed in a care home as his condition is quite severe. Meanwhile, the pandemic has affected my wife and I to the point it makes sense to move into a bigger place, out of the city. My wife has expressed her interest that once her dad is placed, she would like her mum to come move in with us and so our home should have an in-law suite or other suitable accommodations. My mother-in-law can't afford to move on her own. They made some bad financial decisions and they aren't able to move to a higher cost of living area. After years of being patient and respectful about this, I finally put my foot down and I've cited the following reasons. Number one, my mother-in-law will be contributing nothing financially to this arrangement, but selecting a home with accommodations for her is both limiting our housing options. My wife and I will both have to sacrifice things we want in a home. Two, I'm extremely insecure that there will be no boundaries in this arrangement, even if they're established ahead of time. Three, I simply cannot think of a time where I share a roof with her and felt any level of comfort, satisfaction or enjoyment about the situation. I just can't and the idea of committing to a long-term arrangement like that makes me completely queasy. Naturally, this hasn't gone over well. Am I the asshole? You know, the very start where she says she's not picking favourites. Well, to me, she is picking favourites. <laughs> She's sort of disregarding your feelings in this whole thing and just saying, you know, her parents need it, so we need to deal with that. So she's not considering your feelings in this situation at all, in my opinion. Again, as much as I love to look after family and things, you need to think everyone's different and you need to think about your own mental health. If, they, if you're not going to be comfortable living with someone, then you just don't do it. And your wife needs to take that into consideration. You know, it's not good for you. It's not good for your mental health. And eventually it's going to make things a lot worse. You're going to start feeling resentment and it's not going to be good for your relationship in the long run. And you said you've, you've made your feelings known in this whole thing and, that, and they just still totally disregard everything. So I can't say you are the asshole in this situation, but let's have a look at the comments below to see what they say. Commodian Chief says, did I even get that one right? <laughs> My wife is sympathetic, but she's not going to pick favorites between me and her parents. And then says, if she always attends to her parents' needs, even at the expense of disregarding yours, she is picking favorites, not the arsehole. Drink T1 says, wait, they're just going to dump him in a home and leave him on the other side of the country. That's horrible. 
Cult Queen says not the arsehole, don't do it. That would be your uncomfortable holiday time, but all year round. She will take over your house and it will be a two against one, and you will be that one. Their bad money management is not your responsibility. That's your boundary, and your wife should respect that. Real Betty White 69 says, and quotes, my wife is sympathetic, but she's not going to pick favorites between me and her parents. And then says, she says this, but she's willing to make your Christmas miserable in order for her parents to do what they want for Christmas. I'm not going to jump straight to the old Reddit chestnut, you need a divorce, <laughs> but there is clearly an issue here that needs some attention. You didn't marry her parents, you married your wife, not the arsehole. Now, how would you deal with this situation? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story two. And our next story is from Penalty Particular. Am I the arsehole for letting my toddler niece use my adult daughter's toy collection? This feels ridiculous to me, but my daughter is 24 years old. As a child, she collected these stuffed animals and kept them on a shelf in pristine condition with tags on. She never played with them or used them and rarely even touched them, but she would get really angry if anyone else tried to play with them. Now she's older, it's been several years since she's handled them. She's no longer living here, but works out of state after graduating college. Her collection is still in her room at my home. A few weeks ago, I was babysitting my niece overnight. She's four. She stayed in my daughter's bedroom and asked if she could sleep with a few of the stuffed animals. I figured my daughter likely won't be back anytime soon and probably doesn't care anymore. So I removed the tags of a couple of animals, choking hazard, and let her sleep with them. She did get a little drool on them, which I wiped the next day. A few days later, I zoomed with my daughter and let her know my niece used a few of her toys. She seemed upset but didn't say anything until I mentioned I took the tags off three of them. Then she completely exploded, telling me that was vandalism and I was out of line for removing the tags of toys that didn't belong to me, even though she kept them in my house. I told her she's an adult and doesn't need toys anymore, and she told me it was disrespectful of me to damage her possessions that I knew were really valuable to her. Then she told me that her collection, unadulterated, would have been worth thousands, which I didn't know. I feel like she should have told me this, but she just says that I should have known not to mess with her prize collection. She sent me links to the ones that had the tags removed and they're extremely expensive now, but she asked me to replace them. I refused. It's been a few weeks, but she continues not to talk to me. My husband says maybe we should consider just replacing them, but I think she's being kind of ridiculous. She never came back for them. Am I the arsehole for removing the tags on my daughter's toys? I guess we're talking about Beanie Babies right here. I know they're massive collectibles and I know multiple people who collect these things. And yes, like lots of collectibles, they are worth tons now. So to take the tags off them, wow. And without asking, I gotta say you're the arsehole just because, you know, you're trying to get around it by saying like, it's my house and she left them there and I didn't think she wants them anymore and she's an adult, just multiple excuses. But the thing is, you mess with someone else's possessions. You know they were hers, you could have asked her. You even mentioned it over Zoom and you said she used a few of your toys. So you know they were hers and you devalued them. So you are the arsehole in this situation. And I, what, what I don't get is that you didn't sit, stand back and go, why is she leaving them in pristine condition with the tags on? You didn't even question that. You just went, nope, rip the tags off. There you go. Play with that. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. So yes, you're the arsehole. Let's have a look at the comments below to see what they say. Fishy Mummy says, you're the arsehole. You don't mess with a woman's beanie babies. I knew I was right. Adderall Activist says, you're the arsehole. Maybe not so much had you not removed the tags, but you knew they meant something to her and didn't even bother to ask about them before you altered them. They had tags on because she never took them off right. So it's a fair assumption. She probably didn't want you to remove them either. And now you're being dismissive about something she clearly cares a lot about. As her parent, you could have gone to the pharmacy or gas station and bought your niece a cheap toy if you really needed something to sleep with. At the very least, you should apologize and stop calling her ridiculous. Eddie Minion says, you're the arsehole. The toys were not yours. The fact you knew your daughter collected them and kept them with their tags on should have been an obvious, there's probably a reason for this, red flag. You don't damage someone else's property. You don't give someone else's property to someone without their permission. And quotes, she sent me links to the ones that had the tags removed and they're extremely expensive now, but she asked me to replace them and I refused. And then says, let's be clear here. You damaged goods that were worth a large amount of money. You are responsible. You're the one on the hook for replacing them. I mean, you even admit she collected them, kept them on a special shelf in pristine condition with the tags. That should have told you they were special and not just to be given to a four-year-old. Wow. 
to anyone else in the chat below. Do you collect Beanie Babies and have you got a large collection of them? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below and what would have, what would you do in that situation? Let me know and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. And our next story is from a deleted user. Am I the arsehole for uninviting my fiance's college friend from our wedding? Hello, so I'm getting married in three weeks in a small wedding with less than 10 guests due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Two of the guests that my fiancé and I initially invited were a couple, a man and a woman, who my fiancé met during his undergraduate years at university in Texas. I will call this woman Renee and her husband Isaac. My fiancé has known both of them for almost 10 years now, which makes me feel like I'm the arsehole for uninviting Renee after she made not one but two inappropriate comments that made me feel uncomfortable. Although I never had the chance to meet her in person, I thought it'd be a good idea if I met Renee and Isaac through a Skype call because my fiancé talked about them all the time. So when that Skype call started, I was initially excited to meet my fiancé's best friends from college until Renee said her first inappropriate comment that made me raise my eyebrow. To paraphrase, she said, Oh, I remember why I wanted to be friends with your fiancé back in the day when we were college students. Because your fiancé said something so out there that it really caught my attention. That he was going commando. Yes, not wearing underwear beneath his pants because he wanted to see how it felt like. Then she and my fiancé laughed, but her husband and I didn't because, well, it was inappropriate for her to talk about my fiancé that way. When I confronted my fiancé about Rene's comment after the Skype call, he just shrugged his shoulders and said, I can't control what other people say. Flash forward to a few days ago, several months after my initial Skype call with Rene and Isaac, and I decided to talk with Rene during a one-on-one -on -one phone call between me and her only, just so I can get a better understanding of who she is. Well, during that awkward phone conversation, we quickly turned to the topic of me and my fiancé's wedding theme. What are the colours? And I said to Rene, blue, our wedding's theme is blue. And then without missing a beat, she suggested, oh, well, I have a white dress with blue flowers saved in my list on Amazon account. I'm sure that dress will fit the theme. Can I also wear a dress that shows my cleavage? My heart immediately dropped when she said that, but I was able to keep my composure because I didn't want to offend her in any way. So I politely said, please wear a solid color. Any shade of blue is fine. And then we hung up. When I called Renee a second time last night, she confessed that her dress was predominantly white with blue flowers. So finally, I just texted her without any further elaboration. You're not invited to the wedding anymore. And since we're not friends, there is no need for us to talk anymore. Goodbye. Was I too harsh? Wow, I'm not sure if it's just me, but did she overreact to that first, that, that story from their college days or what about just saying him going commando? And it, it's like almost there's some sort of like jealousy at play here. I'm not sure. That's, that's just the little feeling I got during that story. And then the text message at the end to say, you're not invited to the wedding anymore. And since we're not friends, there's no need for us to talk anymore. It's like you're trying to stop her to from talking to your husband that, or your future husband, should I say, and to not talk to your husband about it initially beforehand to say you're uninviting her. I gotta say, that's probably gonna make you the asshole in this situation. And then we turn to the the dress, the color is, I'm not, I'm not totally sure on wedding attire. I would say because the whole theme is blue, a white dress with floral patterns would be fine, but, I don't know, someone's going to probably call me out on that and say, no, no white dress at all. You can't wear a white dress. <laughs> but I think I'm definitely going to go with an arsehole in this story. You seem to be overreacting in my opinion. But let's have a look and see what they say. Wandering Wedding says, you're the arsehole. Holy shit. She shared a funny anecdote about how she met your fiance years ago. Nothing inappropriate about that. She was excited in the moment about having a dress in mind. You could have politely told her you prefer her not to. Then you expected her to wear a shade of blue. Then you were really rude to her. Plus she's your fiance's friend and you uninvited her and her husband, obviously, for basically no reason. Two people out of 10, so I'm gonna guess they're super important to your fiance and your jealousy is showing. ETA, since it seemed to blow up, I wanna clarify that I really don't care about the dress. The issue is that OP felt like her fiance's oldest slash closest friends such that they were two guests at a 10 guest wedding, somehow needed to be vetted and approved by her. She seemed very judgmental and controlling. Pronky22 says, you're the arsehole for uninviting someone without talking to your fiance first. And these uncomfortable comments seem much more innocuous than you seem to be taking it. Soon a girl says you're the arsehole. One, it's, it's only rude to wear white to a wedding if it can be mistaken for a wedding dress. A dress with blue flowers is not gonna be mistaken for a wedding dress. Two, just because you're the bride doesn't mean you get to insist people wear a specific color unless they're in the wedding. 
Three, Renee told you she wanted to meet your husband for being outlandish, not because she wanted proof that he was going commando. Four, this isn't your wedding. You uninvited one of your fiance's closest, longest friends without his consent. And City Chic 88 says, you're the arsehole. One, you don't get to decide the guest list by yourself without talking to your husband. Two, the first comment was her remembering why she and your husband became friends. How was it inappropriate? She wasn't talking to him about going commando now. Three, the dress issue. It depends on the dress. White at a wedding isn't the norm, but the blue flowers on it are like to make it look not like a wedding dress, but I can understand why you'd want to choose a different dress. Four, your text message was rude and a huge overreaction. Now, what do you guys make of this story? Do you think OP was overreacting? Do you think she was jealous at all or not? Do you think she was right to say what she did? Would you have done the same? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story four. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. These last few stories, I've been having an absolute blast. And you know, although I haven't been able to reply to all your comments, I am reading every single one of them. And if you'd like to come get involved in our community, I'm, I'm currently on Discord every day. It's really blowing up over there. And I'm loving talking to you guys and getting involved. As I said the other day, there were people in voice chat and they were singing and all that sort of stuff. I was absolutely loving it. I was drunk as a skunk by the end though. <laughs> so yeah, come get involved guys. Would love to see you. Um, the invite link is down below in the description and I will see you in the next one. Take care guys. Much love. Have a great day now.